Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to work with virtual environments on Windows and also how to work with environment variables in your Python projects. I'll also show you how you can create a requirements file that can be handy if you want to install packages on another computer or if you're going to deploy on a server. So first things first, we want to have a project to work with. Now I'm in a folder here called my project. And here I'm just going to create a sample file. Let's say we have an app.py file. So here we might be working with some module. Let's say we are working with the Flask module. So one thing we can do, of course, is to install it globally in our to install it globally in our system, and then we can go ahead and use that. But when we do that, then we just make it so hard for us to even be able to deploy this application because there will not be a way that we can tell which packages that this project needs. So the best way to handle that is to create a virtual environment. So I'm going to bring up a terminal here. So I'll click new terminal. So by default, it opens PowerShell, but I'm going to open using command prompt. And uh, this is where we, what we're going to be using. So here, you see I'm in projects, then my project. If I do a dir here, you should see that we have the app.py file. And here, what we can do is go ahead and create a virtual environment. So we're going to be using a, a tool called virtual env. So we need to first make sure we have installed it using pip. So pip install virtual env like this so once we have virtual env then we can go ahead and use it to create a virtual environment so the way we do that is by typing in virtual env then the name of the environment so let's call ours vnv so vmv like this all right so once we do that it's going to go ahead and set up the virtual env folder here and it has all our environment files so whenever we create a virtual environment then we want to activate it so in our case, we want to activate it by executing the, the activate script. So what you can do here is type in venv, then you to put a slash, then we want to go to scripts, then we want to execute activate. So I'm going to run that. You should be able to see that here we have the environment activated. And right now, everything we install will be installed in this current virtual environment. So let's go ahead and install Flask here. So pip install Flask. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and install Flask. So every time you're pushing this code to GitHub or you're sharing it with someone, you don't want to send your environment file. But at the same time, you want them to be able to know which packages you installed in your environment. So for us to expose the, package, the packages that were installed in our environment, we do that by creating a requirements file. So here, what you can do to create a requirements file, we use pip, then we write the keyword freeze. And then we put the file that we want to put all our packages in. So put a greater than sign. Then we want to create a requirements.txt like this. So when we run this and check our, our files, you can see we have requirements.txt. And if we check here, you can see it has all the dependencies that our project is currently using. So every time we install a new dependency, we want to make sure it is added here by executing the pip freeze command, which is going to update the requirements file. So one, one other thing I want to show you guys is how to work with the environment variables. So environment variables can be good if you don't want to expose some information to version control. So let's say you have like a, an API key that talks to maybe Google APIs and maybe your project is public on GitHub. So you would not want to be pushing this to GitHub. So what you can do here is, in fact, let me first create a Git repository here, just so everything I'm doing here is connected. So I'm just going to do a Git init here. And that's going to create a git project here and you can see that now our virtual environment is being included so what we can do now is create a .git ignore file and that's going to be responsible to tie away the things we would not want to send to version control so first off of course it's going to be the environment folder the, the virtual environment and you can see that now it is blurred out okay so in our app i'm just going to have a simple function that that's going to be responsible to print out the api key so here i'm going to have def print underscore secret key so let's say we have a secret underscore key so let's set that one to secret key all right and then we want it to print it so let's print so i'm just going to copy this and then paste it here so after we print then we can call the function here print secret key and that should go ahead and execute the function when we run the program so here I'm going to run python app.py and run that and then you can see here it prints some secret key So if we went ahead to push this code to github, obviously this will be exposed in our code 
So what we always want to do is we always want to create an environment file. So in our case, we can create it by writing env.bat. All right. And then inside the env.bat file, what we can do here is we can use the set keyword and then we can set it in the environment. So here we want to set secret key and set it to our some secret. So here let's just set secret key. We want to set it to the string. So this should be a string. You don't have to put the quotes. So let's set it like this. And now if we go here, we can now instead of using the hard coded one here in the code, we can use the OS module to read from environment variables. So here let's import OS. Okay. So now here we can do OS dot environ. You want to run dot get, and then you want to put the key of the of the variable you want to get. So in our case, the variable is called secret key. So I'm going to copy this and just paste it here. So now if I save here and I come here and I try to run the same Python again, you can see that we have none here. And the reason for that is we updated an environment file, but we didn't tell our terminal about it. So if we want to update our terminal to be able to know about our environment files, we want to call call then the name our name is dot env dot bat like this then run that so this should be dot env so here we can run the same command again so i'm just gonna run python app py you can see we get some secret being printed here so now that means that whenever we are pushing to github we can ignore this file so inside dot git ignore we can put dot env dot bat all right say that we don't push this to our version control now you can see it is disabled here so one other good practice you always want to enforce is every time you have variables that come from the environment you always want to create a sample file that's going to make you remember which of those variables we are coming from an environment so the way you can do that is you can always look at what you have in your current environment and then you want to create a sample file for your current environment so i'm going to copy this and actually paste it again so that's going to create a copy so I'm going to rename this file to be .env.bat example. So then in the example file, you can just remove the, the real value. And this can be a file you push to GitHub. So that way, whenever you clone the project, of course, you won't have the environment variables. Then you can see exactly the ones you want, you need to set. So if there were things like maybe database URL, you want to set up your own test database or development DB. You can quickly tell that hey we need to first set up these variables and obviously whenever you create a project like this you want to have a readme that explains these things but that is just the gist okay so one last thing here is whenever you want to deactivate a virtual environment maybe you're done coding and you want to activate another one maybe it's another project and you don't want it to to interrupt what you can do is when it's active like it is here when it is selected you can type in the word deactivate so deactivate like this and that is going to go ahead and deactivate it. So now you can see we don't have it selected. So now to show you how this requirements, requirements txt file can be used. So I'm going to remove this virtual environment again. So let's say we are installing this on a new computer and someone wants to set up our project really quickly. The first thing they will do, of course, is create a virtual environment and then activate it. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we are going to be creating a different one, of course. So, so that means they will do something like virtual env. So now I'm going to call this one new venv like this. So that's going to go ahead and create a new one. So you can see here we have a new virtual environment. Obviously this should also be ignored somehow. So new venv. Okay, so now we need to activate it. And that activates it. Let's say we want to install our packages and continue developing real quick. So what we want to do is run pip install minus r then requirements.txt. Okay. And that's going to go ahead and collect all the packages that we were using on a different machine. And you can see it is installing Flask and everything. And we didn't have to say install Flask, install this other new one if we had so many. So it just goes ahead to read from what's in the file and goes ahead to install it so that's it that's how you go around working with environment variables on windows so if this video was helpful be sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i'll talk to you in the next video